Paneloids podcast, guys. This is a very special episode because I'm whispering the whole time. That's right, no, guys. It's no, you're not. Whisper nope. Paneloids. Real quiet Paneloids podcast. Paneloids podcast. Kyle here with Pierre. As you've heard, he is not going to be whispering the whole time because I will just kick him out of this recording and just talk to myself. Today, we'll be talking about Mandalorian, the season finale of the third season right over the third season yes it's the third season kyle okay we're still doing this we're still in this bit i'm still gonna keep doing it it's not a bit it's my new life let's just run through some news and other fun stuff beast boy travels through the multiverse i don't want to talk about this you said you wanted to talk about it now you don't want to talk about it you lied is what you're telling me i'm embarrassed i just started watching titans so we were like oh so let's give it a shot mm-hmm. and honestly episode one pulled us in seeing where it's gone makes me question my <laughs> choices you should like it because you were a big fan of CW shows. I wouldn't say a big fan. Yeah, no, the first season of Titans is solid. Very good. I don't know if you know this, one of the first interviews we actually had was a writer who did a few episodes, Brian Edward Hill. Those were the best episodes. And then it just slowly went weird and downhill. And yeah. That snippet that made it to the internet today. Yeah. So the multiverse Not scene. so good. My main problem is like they show the CW flash and it's just a clip of him running. Like they just swiped a clip. Were they actual cameos? Were they really cameos? It was the editing. It just felt like they just like pieced it together and they were like, oh, yeah, we have to make the multiverse a thing. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know what they were doing. Maybe they're just they're wrapping up the show and they're just like, here you go. Like, they just gave up. They're like, oh, we're canceled anyways. Fuck this shit. I mean, it could have just been a way to try and give a glimmer of hope to keep it alive of like, hey, CW, these characters in the multiverse, if you want any of them, like you could take them and put them in your show. Save the actors. All I know is it felt like a CW show just watching that. The editing level like everything i was like this feels so low budget like it's I feel a like shame, power though. rangers was better like power rangers cast. from like the 90s had better that's a little mean but no that was terrible the way it was edited but it's really like a shame because like there's really good things about it that are just hurt by other factors budget and that's enough about a show that no one's ever gonna remember in a month from now some comic book news because you know comic books in the title of this podcast global comics so apparently them and another company which i can't recall are finally going to get independent books on their app in a subscription based format image boom all these different companies are starting to like make deals with the indie comic companies so you can do a subscription service and read a ton of image books digitally so with with this i think it might be the final nail in the coffin for my collecting i still plan to collect certain books like grim saga anything batman beyond but when it comes to like following a series just because i want to read it when you have like some random x-men title that you know is only going to get 12 issues and then get a new number one i don't think i'm going to do that anymore and i think that indie books doing this subscription opportunity i don't know how it's going to be yet but the fact that they're making deals proves it's going to happen i think that's going to make it so I don't have to follow hard copies. I can read and follow series digitally and just pick up key issues moving forward. And if it's like something I really, really love, collect it and never actually read paper ever again. It's a weird thing, but I think that's the world we're in now where I'm running out of space just because I want to read it today, not tomorrow. All in all, if I pay 10, 10, 10, and 10 to get the top eight, nine publishers, it's still way cheaper than what I'm doing in the comic shop. And then I can really every week see, okay, any new first appearances, anything cool, anyone getting a new power and just grab key issues yeah i guess you could do that do you think this might bring back the nfts there's a new company up and coming it's like distillery or something a lot of big names on it but that seems to be that and i'm not sure how i feel just yet a lot of really big creators ones that i love ones that i pretend that i'm friends with i don't know if that's going to work i will of course give it a try but in an interview one of the founders of this company compared it to supreme but it's digital yeah it's an nft kind of situation i'm not really for that but again i will give it a try i'm more for i want as much reading material as possible for you know the cheapest fee a month i can get the more i get the better if i waste that ten dollars a month and read one book it's not the worst thing because as long as i read three books the next month i'm still making up for what i would have cost to go buy it in the shop and that's not to say i don't want to support the shop i just want to support the shops with things that will support me (laughs) which is a kind of 
grimy statement, but I want to buy uh, key issues. I don't think there's anything wrong in collecting just what you want to collect. Like, I think I'm going to spend the same, but now it's going to be things I really like. I will go all in like I did with Poison Ivy and not think twice about it. You might spend a little less. You won't be buying like random shit. You read it and you're just like, eh, all right, well, good thing I didn't buy that. You know? Right. Now, if I really think it's something great, then I would instantly be like, hey, this number one from Boom could be something. And I would consider it a key and I'd go grab it at the shop. You know what book really actually made me want to go back to comic book shop? Was it a little Superboy? Yeah. Superboy looks Quick so shout good. shout out to Kenny Porter. And again, it looks we interviewed him and we pretend that he's our friend. Doesn't mean we're just like, oh my God, it's going to be so... It, it looks fucking good. I'm sorry. And the art is insane. I can't remember the artist, of course. I'm an asshole. But it looks really fucking good. And everyone's posting about it on Twitter and shit. So I've been excited about that. So seeing it like actually out, I'm like, oh do I go out there? Like, I've been so good not adding more. That's the kind of stuff I want to buy. I think there's something to that too. See, and then there, here we are spending the same amount of money now. Yeah, that's We're what I mean. Like, adding more and more things to our list. We should buy comics and support the people that we know. And we should also buy the ones that we like. And we should set up a subscription service. Yeah. I mean, I would hope that that still helps them somehow, the digital subscriptions, but I doubt that. But like, there's certain characters like Punisher. I won't read a Punisher comic for five, six years, and then I'm buying the ongoing because of the writer that's something i don't necessarily need in my collection but want to read most positive way i can look at this like it basically puts more eyes on me so let's just say like even a hundred a month you budget yourself to buy comics how many books you actually walking away with 25 maybe 30 if you're lucky forget there's also the like variant covers and things like that that right kind of throw off your budget you think one thing's cool as a collector there goes what you read now the 20 30 comics you're consuming in that month goes down to 10 because you spent your budget on two different covers now if you mm -hmm. sacrifice 20 dollars of that budget you can get at least two subscription services and read a hundred things if you wanted. So I don't know. I know it's kind of like beating a dead horse at this point, but I think that's the proper way to embrace digital. Buy what you want to collect and that's it. Give in and just give them endless money and just read as much as you can to make it worth what you're giving them every month. Because I'm sick of yeah. subscriptions, but it just kind of makes sense right now, especially when you don't have room. Hence, you know, my bed post that's slightly behind me to the left here. Yeah, I feel you on that. Anyway, moving on to our next topic. Sorry, that was a little energetic for the time of night it is. I <laughs> apologize. <laughs> <laughs> Let me bring it down. Bring it down a notch. My Adventures with Superman, an Adult Swim Superman cartoon. That looks pretty good. Only a teaser came out. I feel like not enough people are talking about it. You only made me think about it because we were talking about Superboy. Did you watch the trailer? Harley Quinn did good. Harley Quinn did good. I'll be honest, I don't care for it. It's just not my humor. I thought it was good, but I can put it on in the background and like, it's cool to see like characters and things like that and yeah. it's just funny. And like, I really like Poison Ivy and has almost as much screen time and I just... And you really enjoyed Velma. I wouldn't even hover the cursor on whatever it's called, the HBO Max Max now whatever i wouldn't even hover over it okay <laughs> james mangold this is the guy who directed logan mm. he's going to direct swamp thing and that star wars movie where it's like the dawn of the jedi and it's like twenty five thousand years before he's doing both of those mm. oh so, i know you like logan and i like swamp thing so kind of bring us together and we can go to the movies together and hold hands damn we got to collect a swamp thing again i thought you were gonna say we gotta right. connect hold hands i actually have a swamp thing first appearance oh, i think nice. it's a 6.0 are you gonna bring up the spider-man mm -hmm. movies coming to disney plus i wasn't but you can being you just did right now since we're talking about movies i figured i just read this actually when i forgot to come oh, to you're your admitting podcast that. tonight <laughs> Yep. yep. Didn't show when up. I was laying in bed and received your text, how are you making out? Whatever you said. Can we I... acknowledge that you should be proud of me? Because normally I blow up your phone when you're late. And I waited a half hour past the expected time. And so, you know what? I know he's got a crazy work schedule right now. I'm not going to be a pain in the ass like I always am. Let me just wait. And I said, okay, at nine, I'll just check in and make sure he's all right. Because if he's not, I'll turn off my computer and, you know, we'll try again a different day. <laughs> and you fucking forgot about me. You fucking yeah, I... forgot. I got home on time got changed brushed my teeth fully naked so i guess the well, redemption is that you got dressed not fully naked but naked enough i was laying in bed scrolling on instagram and that's when i got your text i was like oh shit so the reason why i brought that up was because i read that spider-man's finally coming to disney plus which is awesome so what you're saying is you were just doing research for the podcast and out of the 30 minutes of research that's what you managed to bring to this episode mandalorian season three finale this season three, right? 
Right. We did this already. I did that you joke. Keep forgetting that season three. Am I forgetting? Or is it all a bit? If it is, it's not a good bit. I'm gonna whisper now again. <laughs> Do you want to start on a positive vibe or a negative vibe? Because I'm afraid I'm gonna kill the mood. Din Grogu. Din Grogu. Shit, we didn't say spoilers. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> Din Grogu. Spoilers for Mandalorian season three finale. Just give it a number. One number? through ten. Six point five. Wow, that's higher than what I was giving it. Really? First time, right? The fight scenes held it up for me. I gave it a and five. I, a straight five. I think the jetpacks were done arguably better than any jetpacks I've ever seen. Because like jetpacks in a sense. The concept's cool, but if you really think about it, it's goofy. You're turning yourself into a missile. It only looks cool for the first few seconds. Once you keep going, it's not cool anymore. You're just going head first into some shit. So they found a way to kind of almost give it a little bit of an Iron Man vibe, but they had more control. The armor using her hammer and knocking people out of the air, pretty solid. So I think that's why it's a 6.5 for me. That's a whole like two points is all the fight scenes and the choreographing of that. For sure. That was cool. I just felt like it came and went too quick. And like, mm. I didn't really get much other than, all right, they finished the fight scene and that was it. TIE fighters, Grogu fighting red guys, the guards, whatever. Stormtrooper Mando knockoffs, right? Of the stormtroopers, whatever they are. You want to just go to that real quick? Let's go to that because that's a complaint for me. The Mando inspired stormtrooper. Mm -hmm. They got flamethrower, grappling hook, the jetpack. Is it very cool? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it a severely overused trope? Here's the hero. How can we take on the hero, make an army of copycats of them? It's been done so many times before. So I'm not that excited when I see it again, but they were really cool. It just wasn't very creative. My thing with that, they still suck at shooting. Mandalorians are coming flying down at them and somehow they miss every shot. They're the only ones with the guns and the other ones are just flying down at them with hammers and they're still missing every <laughs> shot. Yeah, that was embarrassing. And then I also still don't understand things and how they work necessarily. How do they die so quick in Baskar armor? But then Mando can take 50 shots of the chest. <laughs> Just constantly like, ding ding <laughs> he just keeps going like i understand make for good cinematic right so i see it as those mandalorian are just poor mm. and they don't have like the pure stuff you know and that's why they're not shiny and chrome i just felt like there wasn't enough like story so just to go straight to the ending there was no open-ended anything yeah. and it made me feel a little like was this the last season like the open-ended thing mando going to the rebels in a sense and being like hey i still want to be a bounty hunter but i'd rather be like a good bounty hunter that's not a plot point for a whole season i think this, we're just you know. gonna see him in another show he might come in and help so you hear yeah, the you music know. And it's like, oh, sweet. The thing that contradicts all of this is John Favreau stated that he can go on with Mandalorian forever. Like he has no end in sight. You have no end in sight. You don't seem to have a next season in sight <laughs> because you didn't give us any hints to it because the hint you did is a little lackluster. And the ending with the little circle on them just chilling on the porch and Din Grogu <laughs> playing with a frog. That's our thing to think about for the next year and a half. Till the next season comes out. I don't really want to see Grogu as a kid anymore. That's my other thing. I don't want to see him walk yes when he was fighting the whatever they're called in the red mm -hmm. that was just like embarrassing not as bad as him walking into the bar in the last minute of the episode his feet were just like doop, 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 oh, doop. like yeah. they didn't touch the ground i'm sorry get a new puppeteer what are we doing i wish they would just cgi him i like the practical thing but are they struggling with it that severely that they give him a floating stroller that he gets carried has a droid mech for two episodes like it just gave him the ability to move around not sure why they decided to do that now you would think the droid idea of him driving a droid would have came sooner to extinguish the floating crib but they did it now and then he lost it anyway what's he just walking now because it's not good it's not a good look the walking is not a good look I and they know like that when, clearly when he was backing up in the droid and like they were like kind of funneled into that room with him Mm -hmm. I thought like he was going to fight them in the droid. Like he yeah. like immediately got beaten out of the droid. I thought he's not only going to use the full potential of the droid, he's going to murder them. And then it's going to be like, uh, maybe Luke was right. He's not going to go down the right path with someone who shoots people all the time. And no, he completely lost the droid, which seemed like a huge dragged out plot point for that droid in the end of the episode to just become the sheriff. And like, think about this season as a whole. Like, did it close things? Yes. But then we had like the Jack Black episode. 
And I feel like they closed on the big bad and the cloning thing. Moth Gideon was just making clones and that's the end of it. I think the last episode before the finale was awesome. Yeah. I thought like this second episode was going to follow that up. Like even if Moth Gideon got away again, I'd be fine with that. But like show us that he got away. Like show us a hand like coming out of the fire. Don't you think that they should have reintroduced him with the helmet and then him take off the helmet? Everything's about keeping your helmet on. Wouldn't it have been like really cool have him be the villain for this season and then you find out it's the same villain you've had the whole time yeah. they could have revealed it at the same time but at least start that way yeah. the second to last episode ended with Mando getting captured two guards taking him away and in the beginning of this episode he just broke free you ended on that cliffhanger and it was just quickly cleaned up and just went right back to what it was of just like fighting like I said I think what's gonna happen is now that they're like fully established they have like a lore behind them people love them like right. I think the next time you see them is gonna be in something else and i think from there they're gonna create some sort of hook to pull you into whatever adventure they're gonna go on maybe it's a time jump maybe that's all it is ahsoka's next so ahsoka's coming up i think you're gonna see him cross paths with there, someone yeah. i'm doing adventures with them and maybe if he does get another season it'll come way later i don't know like interviews and shit there's all pointing towards more season and this ending points to a dead end he has a son he likes droids and he works for the new republic now but you are right about the helmet thing where you don't think Grogu is going to get a helmet even though they're making a Mandalorian that's probably the whole reason they did this thing of like we're changing our ways and do we believe you should wear a helmet yes but we're not going to hold it against you if you don't because you're right Grogu's face is really wide it wouldn't look like I, a helmet it would look like a toaster I think they've tried this probably in production and they're like there's no way to do this guys there's no way we got to bail right. we got to bail it looks <laughs> bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to back out somehow. Yeah. We got to get the fuck out of this. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's all I got from Mando. Not that I wanted to shit talk it for X amount of time, but it's just not I thrilled. Not as bad of a letdown as like Lost. Aging us by admitting that one, but Paddler's Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Paddler's Podcast. cannot be saying that name right is it mangold or did i just do a typo i do a lot of typos i do do a lot of typos great james goldman james manigold manigold mangold no, no, i don't no. know goldman goldman you typoed it backwards yeah no. it's goldman no i wouldn't mess up that but anyway little puppet feet so jeremiah is screaming at the top of his lungs right now probably on the highway on the way home from work because that's when he listens to the non-jeremiah panel <laughs> <laughs> little puppet feet wouldn't be a pierre episode if there wasn't three minutes of him looking down and ignoring me it just wouldn't be the same little puppet feet drop it in I mean, the comments drop it in the comments